Greetings fellow programmers, this is Pavel with a C-sharp exercise from the book Visual C-sharp 2012 How to Program. This one is uh, chapter 5 and challenge 41, enforcing privacy with cryptography. Now the assignment states that a company uh, wants to send data over the internet and ask you to write a program that will encrypt it so that it may be transmitted more securely. Now all the data is transmitted as four digit integers. Your app should read a four digit integer entered by the user and encrypted as follows. We will replace each digit with the result of adding seven to the digit and getting the reminder after dividing the new value by 10. So uh, I'll give you a quick example. Um, let's say the digit will be four, five, six, seven. So the first digit is 4, so we will get a 4 plus 7, and all of it will be the reminder of 10. So 4 plus 7 is 11, and the, we will do the reminder of 10, and that's going to be our encrypted digit. And um, furthermore, we will swap the first digit with the third, and... Uh, the second with the fourth. So after we encrypt them, we will also swap them. We will write a separate app that inputs an encrypted four-digit integer and decrypts it. In other words, we will reverse the uh, encryption scheme and we will form the original number. And we want to use a specifier D4 to display the encrypted value in case the number starts with zero. Like if the user enters zero, one, two, three, if, if you convert, uh, if you write it like this, which would be, and convert it to an integer, the leading zero would be stripped down and it would be just a one, two, and three. So we need to kind of keep the leading zeros. All right, so um, I decided to do this as an uh, object-oriented uh, exercise. So we will create some classes. We will create a class encryption uh, we, I won't be doing another app for decryption, instead I will do a second class for decryption and I will do a third class that will hold basically the common properties and methods which is going to be the base class both uh, for the encryption and decryption both the encryption and decryption classes will inherit from the base class. Alright, so uh, let me start with the creating the base class so I will add a class and it's going to be, I'll call it something like uh, encrypt, decrypt, uh, base. So this is going to be a base class. Uh, what, what do we do uh, for encryption and decryption? Uh, there's some common tasks that we do. First one, we need to get the digits. Just by uh, typing a four digit integer, if I type uh, an integer uh, five, six, seven, eight, it's 5,678. It, we have to separate it into uh, individual digits. So that's the first thing. Uh, and it's the same for encryption and decryption. So that we, we will use that uh, in our base class. Uh, next uh, in these classes, uh, in the main class, we will need uh, uh, to swap the digits. That's the same thing for both decryption and encryption. We will swap the first and third, and then the second and fourth digit. Um, in both, uh, we need to kind of get the final output with the D4 to make sure that it's uh, you know four digits. And uh, let me see if there's anything else. I think that might be all. So basically, we will pass the uh, input, which is going to be the integer, to our base class. And from there, we will uh, assign the digits and then swap them. And then in an encryption and decryption class, we will perform the actual calculations. Uh, because obviously, the encryption and decryption will have a different calculations. Uh, Okay, so here's my base class. 
and um, I'm going to do it uh, encrypt the crypt base I'm gonna do the constructor and I will be passing into it the integer input whatever the user enters as the number so I'm gonna first before I populate the uh, uh, or assign any values I need to get some properties and um, in this case I can get a, um, a property for, for input so it's probably input integer just an automatic get set and uh, next one I will do um, integer encrypted I'll call it get set basically this one will uh, this one will hold the um, the digits the encrypted digits and uh, next one actually I need a integer and the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna assign a separate digit for each of them we only have four digits so I can do digit 1, digit 2, digit 3 and digit 4. Now I will be also doing more advanced solution for this. Uh, right now in this exercise we will only deal with uh, four digit integers. Uh, in the more advanced I will do I will do it so we are not limited by four digits. We will not know how many digits the user actually enters and we will perform the encryption of whatever uh, integer the user enters but in this exercise this is the basic uh, from from the book so I'm just gonna follow that so that's our digit one I'll just copy paste it and uh, it's gonna be digit two digit three and digit four two three and four okay so um, I can go to my uh, uh, to my constructor and I can assign my input property to the input from the from the user as for the digit 1 and digit 2 uh, 3 and 4 those I need to get somehow I need to get them from the input I have to find out a way how to separate the whole integer like let's say again 5876 into 5 uh, as five what was it five thousand eight hundred and seventy six so five eight seven and six as separate digits so I will do a method called get digits and again this is uh, for our base class which is then this method will be used for both encryption and decryption so uh, and in this method I will get the digits now how do I do that now if I write an integer 5678 the best way to do it it digit separately is from the from the from the end and to and to get this how do I get the 8 from uh, from an integer well it's fairly simple you will do the mod 10 because when you do that you do 5678 uh, there should be a mod here. Now here it is, mod 10. And hey, it's 8. And after that, all I have to do is actually divide by 10, but keep the, just the integer value. So 5678 divided by 10. If I do that, I will get 567.8. But I'm only keeping the integer portion, so now I will have 567. And 567 mod 10, I will get 7. Then I will have five, uh, then I will again divide, you know, 567 divided by 10, which will give me 56.7. I will keep the integer portion, and I will have 5 and 6, and I will do the same for 5 and 6. So that is the formula how to get the digits from the number but we have to start from the end uh, so uh, to get the digits I will do uh, a 
an integer digit and it will equal to the input the property mod 10 so this is get the last digit from the integer input and after that again we have to divide the number by 10 this was this is the mod this is the reminder now we get the first portion of the number the integer portion of the number which will give us the rest of the of the digits so it's gonna be uh, the input which is the property input divided by 10. now if you're not familiar with the, uh, this uh, kind of uh, syntax basically what i just wrote is input equals whatever is in the input currently divided by 10. so uh, and that gives us the uh, reminder the, again the integer portion of the number like so and now i will simply return the digit so i can come over here to to my uh, constructor and call this method and assign it to each of the digits but remember we're starting from the end we're getting the last number first the number before that second and so forth so we start from digit four and we will call the get digits and then we will call the same method for digit three up three two and one if you did it from the other way from one two three and four it would not work again we are getting them from the end so that's why digit four has to be assigned or go through this method first because the first number we kind of dissect from the input is the last one so uh, that's how we get the digits and now again uh, after we have them we can encrypt them but uh, that's gonna be a portion or, or a method for the encryption and decryption they will have a separate ones but the common one will be the swapping we have to swap the first with third and the second with fourth so i can do a method and just void and call it swap digits and it's a void because we will be uh it's not gonna return anything because we are going to simply assign uh or s switch the digits or assign the values to digit one two and three and four so i will in order to do that i needed some temporary uh holder that will hold a value uh, of one of the digits while i'm sw swapping them so i will do temp equals digit one so now when digit one is stored in a temp i can assign a different value to digit one and still have the original value available but except this time it's being stored in the integer temp so our digit one will now equals digit three like they wanted us to sw uh, swap and the digit three will have the value of digit one which now is being stored in temp and we will do the same with the uh, uh, two and four so our temp will now equal to digit uh two except sorry about it uh i made a mistake here this integer temp does not oh yeah i'm just in yeah sorry i'm just initializing it, it's not really necessary because i'm uh i could just do this integer temp equals digit one right away i don't have to initialize it to zero and then assign a different value to it anyway so i have a temp now which uh, holds the value of digit two so now digit two can be assigned a value of digit four and of course digit four can now be assigned a value of digit two which is now stored in temp so now we have the digits we swap them and we can output the final kind of message the final result which again is the same for both decryption and encryption because it's simply uh a get final output 
and we will simply return uh, digit one dot to string. We will concatenate the string to get as plus, and it's going to be uh, digit two dot to string, and then plus digit three dot to string, and finally digit four uh, to string and this is the return so basically we will now get what will as look like a like an integer but it actually is going to be four separate characters not even an integer because they are converted to string and this is our base class so um mm, yeah this is enough for now and in my uh, in the part two we will do the actual encryption and uh, decryption and we will of course instantiate the object as well so uh, stick around and watch the next video for the uh, encryption and decryption see you then